Good morning. It is a fresh day and it's a fresh load of swearing, I think, today. So basically the plan is the bottom frame is pretty much made, but I need to mount the body to it. Now, as I've kind of shown in previous videos, um, the bottom of these are rotten in terms of wood and also steel. It doesn't go all the way down to the bottom and it's very badly welded by the previous owner, um, the guy who did the restoration. So we're going to try and get the wood out of these B pillars and we're going to replace it with steel. How do we get the wood out? That is the next question. Now, I've gone online. I've kind of looked and looked and looked. I couldn't really find a definitive answer. So I've just come out and had to fiddle around myself. That's what she said. <laughs> not literally fiddling around myself, fiddling around myself with this. Now, from what I gather so far, there's three bolts that go through, or well, there's five, but there's only three on mine for some reason, there's two missing. Um, so I believe the kind of bumper would have had two bolts in, but I don't have those on this. Um, and then there's three bolts up here. So those are just simply kind of a screwdriver on one end and try and twist the nuts off the back, the square nuts. Uh, if they're stuck on yours, if you're doing this kind of thing yourself, uh, just heat the nut up with uh, like a little blowtorch and then carry on doing it and it should basically come free easily and they're salvageable. Then there's a few nails which we found on the inner side, so as near to the interior as possible. I think I found three. But again, I don't know if it's they only do three or it depends on the car, so there should be some nails. Uh, you'll let me check yours, but basically down there. And then the hard bit is going to be getting the nails out of this side where the skin meets this because it's what I believe is it's hammered through the steel and then into the wood itself because the wood isn't coming out at the moment. So there is a little trick I found by doing it. And um, so I'm going to share that with you now. So what I found that seems to get these nails out the least destructive way is having something kind of long and thin. Uh, but obviously it needs to be a bit substantial because you're going to be prying on it and putting it in between the steel layer and the wood like so and basically levering it very slightly and what that's doing is pushing the heads of these pins out now I haven't got a very good hammer but you might be able to just get like a, a hammer with a nail removing that part and pull it out um, I haven't so I'm just using some side cutters or snips depending on where you're from what you want to call them and just trying to get it under the head of the nail or screwdriver like that and then the nails simply come out like so and I've got to do this all the way down so obviously it is going to take a little while but you can see it's not the end of the world I was reading online that this is a real hard process to try and get the nails out um, but touch wood it doesn't seem that way with mine so I'm going to carry on get the rest of these pins out nails whatever you want to call them um, and then hopefully be able to pull this bit of wood out. So the pins took less than about three minutes to get all of those out. So that was really simple. However, the wood's loose, but I can't quite work out what's holding it in now. So I'm gonna try a bit of brute force and then hopefully I can work out what was holding that in so I can take it out on the other side. So there's a screw there, maybe it's that. I can confirm it is not the screw that's holding it.
So still have no idea. I'm assuming there's going to be some fixings from the skin bit on the outside coming in this way, which is why I'm trying to break this wood away from that, um, so I don't have to take the skin off. But yeah, um, it's a bit of a pain in the backside, to be honest, especially because I've smashed my hand the other day and I've got a really bad thumb on this hand, so trying to hammer everything's a friggin' nightmare. So my suspicion was correct. There's two screws that are underneath the outer skin. So back from the shop, uh, I had to pick up some obviously still because I didn't have the right size for it. So originally measured with a vernier on the B pillar and it was 32 mil and that was before I started hacking all the wood out because obviously <laughs> once the wood had got it, it sort of expanded a bit. So 32 mil was the measurement I had. The nearest I could get was an uh, inch and a quarter box section because that roughly works out about 31.7, 31.8 mil, something like that. And then I've gone with a two mil wall so it's kind of the thickest one that I could kind of get. Still really lightweight, which is a bonus. So it's now time to curve a bit of steel. We're going to do the bottom bit first, which is obviously this section, because the wood on my Model A, the earlier one, is in two sections. So there's a bit of wood there, then it stops, and then there's a bit of wood there. I can't go all the way down with steel because of what's in the middle. So my plan is do a complete steel bottom, which attaches to the frame, as in the, the, the bodywork frame. When I do the roof chop, I'm going to do steel top. I'm going to take the wood out and do the steel top in one piece and then I'm going to bridge the gap which normally has no steel I'm going to do like a nice two mil finishing plate or something just over one side of that so after cutting the steel it's pretty damn evident it ain't going to fit in a straight line because there's a massive gap and if you can see if I follow that line there of it you can see that obviously this bit needs bending upwards and vice versa like this metal bar is just not going in a straight piece might be able to do some kind of weird angle if I was a bit bodging it but we ain't bodging it so the kind of the easiest way to do it would be hard than the chassis, which would be three relief cuts and then leaving one bit not cut and kind of just grind that out a little bit, bending it, wilding it back up. Do that a couple of times and you'll get the curve cut with an angle grinder and you'll get a nice curve. However, what I have done is dug out an old tool that I've had for about four years, never used it because I thought it was pretty poo to be honest, um, and gave it a go with rolling the other one. And we do have a nice bent section. Um, I mean, it's not, it's not pretty, but it's probably prettier than curve cutting. Uh, but as you can see, that fits mint, follows the curve. Obviously it needs to go down slightly, but follows the curve pretty much. Uh, it's the best I'm gonna do on the bender that I've got. And I reckon that's gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna do the other one, I'm gonna show you how to do it, but we are gonna time lapse it because this probably took me about an hour to mess around doing. So yeah, let's go.
So both on curved, exactly how I wanted them. As you can see, both curved are exactly the same. So obviously once they're in the vehicle, they'll kind of sit like that, but obviously further out. So I'm just gonna clean up the grinder and um, they don't really need doing, but obviously I need to weld to them as well. So I'm just gonna give a, a little flat disc over the top and then we're ready just to start chucking some holes in because there's obviously bolts on the B pillar that bolt through these. So yeah, let's uh, let's clean up and crack on. Well, buzzing with these bad boys, they're nice and clean, ready to go. I decided to clean the rears as well because I'm going to epoxy prime them before they go in. I'm going to do that with all the air uh, beep and I'm going to clean all that out, epoxy prime it, get these in, obviously epoxy primed, and then just weld the fronts up. And then this will be a kind of a structural bit. I may do some spot wires for as well because it just makes sense to do it. Um, it ties in as much of the original metal work to this new metal work as possible. So yeah, they're ready to go in. I've just got to work out where there's a couple of holes that need bashing through. So I'm going to go into the car, measure, bash room holes through. Hope they're in the right place because I don't want to have to make these again. And yeah, we're pretty much then done. I may make some kind of fancy bottom bits, but yeah, let's, uh, let's just see how it pans out. Well, hey, so we've got the bits done. They're all drilled and bent. Now, there's two holes here, which are obviously this for the door bumper. Now, my model A didn't have them, but they're going to have some on there at some point. And then the top three holes, well, because that's only an inch and a quarter back, it doesn't pick up on the outer two. So I've only needed to put one hole through here. Um, once it's obviously in and welded, it's going to be strong enough that the two outers aren't going to crush anyway. Um, so that's perfectly fine. But you'll see that I had to go through the cone piece on the drill to uh, open this up, but also to give it a chamfer all the way around. And the reason being is because these holes up top are recessed inwards. So I've made this hole big enough to go around there. Um, it acts as a crush tube, but it just means that it's going to be a much nicer finish. So a bit of a pain to get it in you'll be able to see once that pivots round and once I've sorted the bottom out that's perfect. So now I've got to focus on the bottom which means cutting this completely away. Now the problem I've got is as soon as I cut that the doors are going to go crazy again which is fine because I know it's not fully square anyway. Um, if I was going to do this with a square frame as I mentioned before I'd put a brace in at this point uh, from the A and B pillar just weld a temporary piece of steel in between the two and then cut this section out. However I'm not too bothered at this stage so I'm going to angle grind straight down there and I'm also going to angle grind straight down there. I'm probably going to take this corner bracket out because it's been wired in badly. And it's also not really attached to the wood up top anyway um, because that's all split. Finally! <laughs> 
So the guy that's done the restoration has decided rather than fix the rotten B pillars at the bottom to just put these patch panels straight over the top. What he should have done and what I'm going to do is cut this back to where it's clean metal and I'm going to remake this lower section. I'm just going to remake it out of some sheet steel I've got knocking around. Doesn't need to be perfect but it does need to actually exist ideally. Um, once I've done that, it's going to be a case of cleaning up the rest of the metal, which he hasn't bothered cleaning, as far up as I can get, and then epoxy priming. And then, and only then, I'm going to get on to fitting these. So, a bit of cardboard. Uh, a lot of people call this CAD, as in cardboard aided design. Um, but yeah, basically, get a bit of like old cereal box or whatever, and this is basically me making a pattern for the part I need to make out of steel. I'm skeptical whether I'll be able to do it, but I'm going to try and bend it in one go. I'll be able to certainly do one bend like that, but I'm just not overly confident on the next bend. But we're going to give it a go. Um, I mean, like, what's the worst that can happen? Oh yeah! So the lower section's made, obviously bent round. We've just roughly chucked a bit of steel in for the time being, just to give me something to clamp to and hold the uh, the wire up. But now I'm just going to tick a couple of tacks on it, and then we'll finalise the shaping of it, kind of once it's all wired up. So let's drop some tacks in. Right, so it's all cleaned up. We've cleaned the inside, the outside, the outer skin and the inside of that. So basically everything's cleaned along with this. I've also bashed through a couple of holes all the way through. So through here and out the other side. And they're gonna allow me to do some spot welds of this skin onto this. Now I'm gonna be obviously epoxying all of the inside here and the inside here. It's a wild fruit epoxy primer. Um, and then basically as soon as both parts are dry, which may take a little while because it's absolutely freezing, I'm going to press them together, weld up the spot welds, and then I'm probably going to just stitch all the way down with a TIG welder. Um, and then that will mean everything is basically protected by epoxy. Once that's done, another quick coat of it just over the top. And then this is basically this B pillar sorted and I've got to do the other one at some point. So. I'm going to leave it, I'm not going to record me doing this because I'll get the camera covered as well as myself. So by the magic of video, this is what it looks like done. So that's nicely epoxied. As is this piece. Now we're going to try and carefully get it in without scratching it, which is not ideal, but it is going to get scuffed. Um, and then once it's in place, it's a case of wilding it all up.
Well, it's been a long day. Now, I'm glad that this is sorted. I'm glad there's a new bottom on it. So basically, the bottom's done. The box section's wilded in. I've wilded in all the spot holes with the TIG, and then I've just TIG stitched. When I come to paint, obviously, I'm going to PU and seam seal all the seams, so um, stitch is perfectly fine. But yeah, basically, I'm going to do the other side. I won't bore you with the video of you watching me do the other side. I'll just crack on that with myself. And then on the next video, I'm hopefully going to either carry on backwards and round or I'm going to end up tying these into the frame and attaching it to the bottom. Not sure which yet, but see you in the next video.